Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TNG and I'm back with a brand new video and today we're going to be making a setup on Race Room. I was going to do this on ACC but I kind of already know what to do in terms of setup for ACC so it'll be a little bit harder for me to use my book when I've already got the knowledge installed in my brain. But I'm going to come across to Race Room where I don't really play, I don't really know the setups. I'm going to jump on a track which is Interlagos which is like my favourite track you guys should know. Um... And I'm going to use my book to help me tune a car and see how far I can get up the um, up the time trial list. At the moment, the fastest lap is a 1 minute 30.966. That's done in the Audi, uh, Audi Evo. And um, yeah, let's see how far we can get up the leaderboard, man. Um, let's do a launch a leaderboard challenge. It's actually so many GT3s on race room. It's kind of crazy when you when you look at the um, amount of GT3s they have. Um, They've, they've added the M4 and I believe they've added the new Porsche 992 as well. Um, give me two. Let me get my book. So, boom. As you can see, right there. I've got the book right there. This is the tuning guide, the tuning handbook that should help you guys improve your setups. I'm going to think about what car I'm going to use. There's literally so many. Bro. So many. We've got the 488 even. BMW Z4, which is a much, much older GT3, so I'm not too sure about the pace of the older cars. We've got the Corvette C7, which is normally pretty decent from what I can remember on this game. Um, got the 720 now as well. Got the Mercedes AMG 2020. I'm not going to lie, guys. If there was a decent league doing um, race room, like a GT3 league, I would probably do it because... There's literally so many good tracks on this game. They could put together an absolutely phenomenal calendar to do a, a, a league. On. But the interest would have to be there. Competition would have to be there. And I, I would definitely be... What car are we going to pick? Um, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with it. Yeesh, got some nice liveries as well. Uh... I think. <clears throat> so, I'm going to use the book. Um, pretty much everything you will see in the setup screen, I have a chapter for that in the book. So, there's nothing really missing. When I when I did make the book, I thought about all the different, all the different games with all the different uh tuning menus. So I didn't miss anything. The only game I couldn't um get the full tuning screen for was i believe the uh, i racing but anyway let's see we're going to the car setup i'm gonna put my force feedback down a little bit because i know this is normally pretty heavy <clears throat> and I'm not going to change anything just yet the tire pressures i can't change anyway so i leave those I'm just going to drive and see how the car feels on default and see if I feel, feel what needs changing and have a look through the book. See, you know, the, first, the most important thing is being able to identify what you don't like about the car. Okay, so if you have a feeling in the car that you don't like, you need to be able to identify that. And then, of course, after that, you can make the changes that you need to make. We're just going to go ahead on track let me turn this down a little bit because i know these cars can be quite loud <clears throat> so yes let's see let's see let me make sure the volume on the microphone is high enough as well and for some reason sometimes the volume on the mic Go ahead and make sure mic volume is all right. This is definitely going to be like a, a longer video than normal. We're pretty much going to do this live. I may cut some parts, but just want you guys to see how useful the book can be. Let's start off and have a go around into Lagos.
that reason there's no timer. Don't know why. Let's just try and get a clean lap. That's the only bad thing about race room is you struggle to fill the rear of the car. Try to keep it in third. short shift how come he do a good luck right, this is the first lap we're gonna compete 32 9 so that's about about two seconds off the fastest time at the moment. There's a couple of things I want to change in the setup, so let's jump back into the setup screen. Now the car was quite understeery and stuff like that, but what I wanted to mainly focus on, um, we're going to go through a few chapters of the book. I'm not going to go through everything because obviously that's why you need to buy the book. But I'm going to see what I can use from the book that can help me make a setup. Um, at the moment, I would say the car is quite understeery. Um, the back end just seemed to bog down a lot when I was coming out of corners. It was quite hard to get the car turned in the slow corners as well. Also, we can look at the characteristics of the track. It's sort of... Interlogs has got a little bit of everything. It's got a, a couple of medium speed corners. Also, um, it's got a long straight and it is sort of a tight and twisty track. And I do have a section for that in the book as well. Which is um, optimizing setups for different tracks, which is like 11.1 which is tracks with a long straight, has an incredibly long straight, tight and twisty tracks, which is 11.2, and tracks with high speed corners. Now, I wouldn't say this track has high speed corners as much, so I can focus sort of on 11.1, 11.2. I, I, I do think sort of optimizing the car probably a little bit more towards the corners because it is only one really long straight, and you can lose so much time in the middle sector as well. Um, also, I can go to the section of the book where it says learning the car characteristics, which is front engine cars and mid engine cars and rear engine cars. Obviously, you know, stating the obvious, this is a front engine car. Pretty much I know the difference between how cars tend to feel, the different characteristics. But someone who's new to sim racing might not realize that, you know, if you pick a front engine car, then you're probably going to have to expect a little bit more understeer and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you're going to get a little bit more stability and predictability when you're driving so um i can go to that section and check out the characteristics this is if i was someone who didn't know what i was doing um also there's a, another section set up imbalance and how to fix handling issues which i can go ahead and try and fix how to fix understeer which is 10.1 in the book um and go through that section and see what i can highlight and what's going to help me fix understeer so i'm going to have a look at that section 10.1 um the car is understeering quite a bit so we're gonna try go ahead and find that now on, on my version of the book i don't actually have the pages numbered so um <laughs> you guys have got a lot better than i do put it that way um get to 10.1 how to fix understeer now i'm going to give you a few bullet points i'm not going to give as i said i'm not going to give you too much because then pretty much i'm giving you everything in the book and you will you won't have to really buy it for yourself and gain the knowledge yourself, but um, cars understeering, I've got a few options. Stuff in the front suspension, um, increase rear suspension stiffness. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't change the tire pressures in, in this mode at the moment, so tire pressure is not too important. A front toe angle adjustments. Um, I can change the aerodynamic balance, which would be you know changing rear wing and stuff like that, trying to find the right balance. I don't believe you can change the front wing. 
on GT cars. You can't change the front splitter in the Bentley on this game anyway. Um, some of it can be driver technique as well. And, you know, you just got to keep testing and fine-tuning the car. I'm not going to actually go into each section because everything is quite detailed. So it's not just, those are just the bullet points of what you can do. But it's going to give you more information about what you would need to change to fix that. Um, let's go ahead and look at maybe tight and twisty tracks. Um, again, tells you similar things. Um, front suspension softening, stiffening rear suspension, um, optimizing your front downforce, and a lot of that can be through the dampers as well. And that's where it gets, that's where most setups get more technical, where people um, struggle because if you can't change the front splitter, most people are not sure how then to affect the setup of a car to get the front into turning more. But again, that's gonna you're gonna have to go into the dampers, which we also have a section for the dampers as well. So um, lots to get stuck into um literally it's given me an inkling what to change also mess around with the toe settings um and of course guys with with this as well it doesn't just tell you um what to do it's also going to give you the negatives of your changes as well so as much as you're gonna you know setups are all about a, a balance and act as much as it's going to tell you what to try and do the book also tells you you know, when you change this, this might happen. When you change that, that may happen. So you have to find the correct balance. And that's all setups really are. It's finding the correct balance for your driving style. It's all well and good buying setups, but never 100% to your driving style. You have to make setups, build setups to how you drive and your techniques as a driver, you know. Um, if you're not at, at an advanced stage, like you might see some of the best drivers in the world who can just adjust their driving style when you can adjust your driving style that's when you're probably more of a more of an advanced driver then it come it becomes more about you know driver technique as well as the self so let's go into it let's see what we can change i think i will soften the front spring rate as well by a couple of clicks mm. where is the toe <laughs> Where's the toe? Am I blind? Tire pressures, ride height. Ride height's on minimum. Let's go into the traction now. The thing I like about race room, the traction control, is you can literally fine tune the traction perfectly to, to your driver style. So, and you've got sort of six traction control different settings, and you've got TC2, which I believe this is new. This is, um, yeah, so TC cut and TC slip is pretty much the same as what you've got in acc but it's just called tc slip on this when acc is called tc2 that also has a section inside the book as well so um that might be interesting this i'm going to go down in the traction control to i'm going to change this to 80 percent i click into tc2 that's going to be 70 percent so you, you can see what we can do here we can literally fine tune how much traction control we are using so let's let's go there and the minimum amount amount of traction control we can have is maybe 20 percent all right um i haven't i don't think i've got a button set up for tc slip so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna touch that because i haven't set up hotkeys for that um we didn't get into we didn't maybe get into brake bias rear anti-roll bar rear anti-roll bar I suppose we could, could try and stiffen that a little stiffen that a little I think a couple of clicks um brake bias probably a little more towards the rear a couple of clicks all right let's see Right, let's see how we get on. Let's see if the changes have worked.
short shifted a little bit. A little bit too deep. And back end sliding. Still not perfect. I can still feel the back end sliding a little bit. We are a tad quicker. I think we can do better than that though. Might run wide here. Just kept it on. I wonder if that corner's better in third. Messed up again. We're up to twenty fifth. Still not completely Natalie happy though. Um, I think some of the changes like the uh, rear toe. Maybe, um, maybe I could go back up on that. I could definitely feel the difference in the in the downforce, in terms of like out of the slow corners, car was a little bit fidget, fidgeting a little bit more. I'll go up by one on the camber, I think, and um, maybe put the TC to eighty five percent, maybe. I'm gonna put the slip down. If we can edit the slip a little bit. Okay. Still still a little bit understeering. Drive train think preload pretty high as well. Plus, so is our engine braking. And the car almost can come a little bit unstable um, when going down on the engine braking because it stops it stops the it stops the stability on the entry into corners while you're braking if you go down on the engine braking. But it can definitely make the car a little bit more nimble as well. Might go down in a preload, so when I'm off the throttle, the car turns a little bit more for the faster corners. And but let's see, let's have a little look for the book as well. See if there's anything we can miss. Let's go into the um, differential preload settings, 7.1. Enhancing traction and cornering. Go to 7.1. Man, I wish I wish on my version. I wish I had the page numbers, man. You guys are lucky. <laughs> um, 7.1. All right, we've got open diff, lock diff. Preload pros of the preload and cons of the preload. 
Poor preload settings can have a negative effect on traction and wheel grip. Preload that is set too high can result in less tire contact, which decreases grip and impairs cornering ability. Right. And maybe maybe we have too much um, preload right now. Let's go. Let's go down and preload a bit. Take it down to one seventy. Also, I'm gonna go on the engine brake and buy a click. Rev limit 7,500. There's a lot of information on race room in terms of the setup, and I like that. I like the fact you can um you can see the engine rev limit, so you actually know when to shift. You know? So if you if you're going if you're revving over 7,500, you're really just you're doing nothing for the car. Right, last try with these changes. Actually managed to get a better run out of that last corner. But we've been way quicker on this lap. Right. Still not perfect. Definitely still not perfect. So let's see, let's see uh whereabouts we are on the leaderboard with that one. <clears throat> still the back end I, I can still fine tune it a little bit um i don't know if i i don't know if i could actually take off more wing i think so we're at a 31 9 we're now nine tenths off of um uh, the world record fastest guy in a bentley about six tenths ahead of us so not bad man not bad at the moment in, inside the top 20, 31.9. I mean, the guys must have been pretty quick, man. Must have been pretty quick that lap time he did. Taking uh, pretty much another second we need to find. Let's see, let's see, let's go. Messed that up a little bit.
So we got a very good run out of last corner. So we've improved to a 31.8. So we only went probably less than a tenth quicker. I've seriously got to try and find something else in the setup that's going to benefit me a little bit more. Something that I haven't looked into already. So let's go back into the setup. And you can see we're running free wing. I think free is probably spot on. Um, we may actually try and stiffen up more of the rear of the car so let's go ahead and stiff stiffen i'm going to try and stiffen everything by about five Messed that up a little bit. So we got a very good run out of last corner. So in the end, we managed to get top 15. Couldn't quite get to top 10. Definitely would have to spend more time playing the game because I just don't know the lines. I could, of course, load up um, uh, uh, somebody else's ghost and I can have a little bit more of an inkling on what they're doing with the setup. But for me, who don't really play this game at all, jumping on the track and able to get into the top 15, um, only eight temps off of the world record, only about half a second off of the fastest time in this car. Um, I don't think it's too bad. We managed to change a few things. I got some inklings from the book and there was that massive jump when i i think i softened the front definitely found a whole load of time but um definitely guys man if you're interested definitely jump on amazon you can get this book for i think it's 1531 i believe if you're in the uk you can also get it on kindle as well that's the um performance unleashed book the gt edition now if this book does do well i will be doing open wheelers stock cards and stuff like that so Let's see how it goes, guys. Cryptic TNG, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.